I'm Katie Allman reporting for Katie Chats at the Planet and Focus Film Festival at the Tiff Bell Lightbox in downtown Toronto. I'm here with filmmaker Sterla Gunnarsson. How does it feel to have your film Monsoon here at Planet and Focus this weekend as well as the Grand River Film Festival? It's great. It feels great. It, uh, you know, we're here, uh, it's November in Canada and we're about to have a warm baptism of Indian rain. <laughs> and why do you think humans have such a primal fascination with storms? Do you think people do? I guess, I suppose, I suppose they do. Why not? Storms are powerful. They're beyond us. They're bigger than us. They make us question our, uh, our dominance on the planet. And so they, you know, evoke a sense of mystery and mysticism and mystery and awe, you know? That's what storms do. But you know, the monsoon is not exactly a storm. The monsoon is a season. It, it comes to India every year in June since the beginning of time it lasts four months it provides the country with all of its fresh water uh, festivals are built around it the economy is built around it movies are built around it and it uh, it's life it brings it, it's 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 the sort of the source of life that comes to India and it's big and overwhelming and beautiful and in the film, you certainly highlight all of the colors of India, as well as the details in the homes in the south and the desert uh, in farther up north. So how did you balance uh, all of those landscapes? Well, I did a research trip uh, uh, with my son the year before I shot the film. And I sort of, we followed, he and I, the, the sort of the path of the monsoon. And we were just kind of looking trying to imagine what those places would be like when the rain came and meeting people and looking for people that would be good subjects, good characters in the film. And in fact, we pretty much identified everybody who's in the film, we identified them the year before. And I was just looking for, um, I mean, the, the, the sort of, the elevator pitch for this film is, it's, a, it's about a dozen people, they don't know each other, they live in different parts of India, they speak different languages, they s worship different gods, they eat different foods, but what they have in common is this crazy relative who shows up once a year and wrecks the house. <laughs> and the relative is the monsoon. So I was looking for people whose lives would be affected, right? Looking for people uh, who we could revisit in the middle of the rains and we could capture, you know, in process, not an interview, but to actually see the impact of, of the rains on them. So, you know, we, we chose a family in Kerala who lives six feet below sea level behind a system of levees and dikes because you know that when the rains come, something's likely going to happen, and, and it did, <laughs> you know. And what was it like for you when the rain did come? I mean, some of the shots, you're, the water is like this high. <laughs> Well, I just, I found it beautiful. I find it moving. Um, it's powerful. Uh, it was so much fun. It was challenging, but fun to learn how to film rain, how to, how to really film rain in a way that, that you capture the, its, its uh, character. Um, you know, we were wet. Uh, you know, sometimes we're up to our waist in water that you really don't want to think too much about what's in the water. Um, but, you know, we always had hotels to go back to and, uh, you know, book it into the shower with your clothes on sometimes. <laughs> and, you know, it was, um, it was great. I mean, the, the, big, the biggest challenge really, like everybody else in India, is that you become subject to the rain gods. So here we are waiting for it to rain. It's not raining. Why, you know, uh, so look at satellite map. Well, it's raining in Bombay. It's raining here. It's raining there. Should we go there? And, and you know if you get on the plane and go there, it's going to start raining where you're waiting, you know, and it'll stop raining there. So it was this constant process of studying satellite images, you know, looking at weather reports, trying to figure out where to be at any given moment uh, in the hopes that, 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 that the sort of the mystery would reveal itself. And shifting gears a little bit, uh, you were nominated for an Oscar for the making of your first ever short film, After the Axe, in 1983, I believe. What was it like starting your career with an Oscar nomination? I've been trying to recover ever since. 
<laughs> it, it was a feature. Oh. It wasn't a short. It was uh, it was nominated for best feature documentary. And it just I sort of thought, okay, well this is what filmmaking will be like. I will have an idea. I'll take it to a studio like the National Film Board. They'll say, let's do it. I'll have a, a, a an intelligent. Um, producer who, who's going to help me make my best possible film and it'll get nominated for an Oscar. The movie business is good. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, you know, um, it was just a fluke, right? And since then, you've gone on to make many award-winning films, but what has it been like for you shifting between uh, fiction and documentary? Because I know you direct on uh, Motive and Rookie Blue uh, along with many other shows and films. Yeah. I kind of think of them as being very similar, you know, I think that the maybe the conventions are different, certainly the size of crew is different, but really you're trying to orchestrate a story, right? You're trying to, you know, find yourself in the middle of circumstances with characters where things will reveal themselves and make sure the camera's pointed in the right place at the right time. So, I mean, for me, I try to make my fiction films feel real and I try to make my documentary films feel dramatic. Well, thank you so much. Uh, congratulations on Monsoon and a terrific career so far as well. Thanks very much. Nice talking to you. Nice talking with you. I'm Katie Ullman reporting for Katie Chats at the Planet and Focus Film Festival in downtown Toronto.